Hey everyone. So in this video, I'd like to talk about solving inequalities. So solutions to an inequality, uh, they're very much like solutions to an equation. Uh, these are just numbers that when we replace them into the variable, they make the inequality statement true. And, and when we solve an inequality, well, this amounts to finding all of the solutions to that inequality, much like uh, the case when it comes to solving equations. And lucky for us, uh, this comparison doesn't stop there. Uh, really solving equations or solving inequalities is, is almost identical to solving equations. So, so almost identical to solving equations. What I mean by that is that, uh, you know, when we work with equations and we want to solve equations, what we do is we sort of perform the same operation of both sides of the equation and take our complicated equation and bring it into a more simpler one uh, where we can possibly read off the solutions. And the same thing uh, is going to happen with, with inequalities, but there are a few things to look out for. There are a few things that are different. And so I want to talk about these things in this video. And the way we're going to bring up this idea is, is we're going to take an inequality statement that's true and see so, what sorts of things that we expect to be able to do. Um, take that true inequality statement and make it false. All right, so here we're going to see what actions when performed to both sides of a true inequality make the inequality false. And these are exactly the actions we have to be a little bit careful about. So we're going to take the true inequality statement four is less than six, right? It's just true that the number four is less than the number six. And one of the operations or actions we expect to be able to do to both sides is uh, add the same number to both sides of the inequality, right? If I add two, to both sides. Um, it feels like that's something that, that we want to be able to do. Um, and we end up with six on the left, eight on the right, and, and actually this inequality statement is still true. Adding two numbers to both sides of the inequality leaves us with a new inequality that's still true. And so when we go about solving inequalities later, uh, adding both sides by, of the inequality by the same number, that's a perfectly valid thing to do. We take four is less than six, the same inequality, and we instead subtract by some number. Well, in this case, we end up with a new inequality. Two uh, is less than four. Actually, this inequality statement is still true as well. And so it's valid to subtract the same number uh, from both sides of an inequality. You know, another thing we can do is we could we could multiply here. We we'll multiply by the the positive number two, and we get eight is less than twelve. Actually, this is a true statement as well. Multiplying both sides by a positive positive number two, it's a perfectly valid thing to do, and, and we can go sort of the other way as well, right? The other operation we might wanna wanna try is division. Right, so if we divide both sides by positive 2, well, we get 2 is less than 3, and this is also true. So all of these operations, these are perfectly valid to do when solving an inequality. Um, and so now you might be wondering, well, we've, we've tried them all. Uh, what, what could possibly go wrong? Um, well, actually, the, the, the trouble occurs when we uh, multiply or divide by a negative number. Right, if I take 4 is less than 
6, this inequality, and I, I multiply instead by, let's say, negative 2. Well, what we get now is, is negative 8 on the left, negative 12 on the right, and if I try to write this inequality statement, the same one that we had before, negative 8 is less than negative 12, well, this is actually false. This is no longer true. Right? We can see that by drawing out a number line. Right, here is negative 8, and going left on my number line, it's digging more into the negative numbers. And we see that negative 12 is to the left of negative 8. And so negative 12, here this is the smaller value. And negative 8 is the larger value. And that's the opposite of what we're saying in this inequality statement here. So it's a false inequality statement. We took a true inequality statement, multiplied both sides by negative 2, and we ended up with a false inequality statement. And really, it's what, what made this different from our previous examples was that we were multiplying by a negative number. And the same thing happens when we take a... a uh, true inequality and we divide by a negative number. So let's say uh, I divide by negative 2. Well, we end up with negative 2 uh, is, is less than, what is this? This is negative 3. This is also false, right? We can draw kind of the same picture. Uh, here's negative 2, negative 1, 0, negative 3, negative 4. And we again see that negative 3 should be smaller than this larger quantity, negative 2. Right? But that's the opposite of what's being said here. And so this is, again, a false inequality statement. And so what would make this true is if we took our false inequality statements and we reversed or flipped that inequality symbol. Right? So if I were to take uh, this inequality and, and reverse the inequality sign, and similarly with this, this one on the right, negative 2 is less than negative 3. If I were to reverse that inequality sign, all of a sudden we have true inequality statements. All right, so that's something I want to take advantage of when solving uh, inequalities is that, okay, we know that when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, we end up with a not true statement, a not true inequality. Well, that inequality would be true if we flip that inequality sign around, right, just like we did here. And so that's what we're going to do when we solve an equation. Right, so, so all of this is just to say that we can manipulate and inequality the same way we manipulated equations. Right, so here we can take advantage of adding numbers to both sides, subtracting numbers, multiplying numbers, dividing numbers to both sides of the inequality. But the one time we have to do something a little bit different uh, is when we multiply or divide by a negative number. Maybe I say multiply both sides. By a negative number, we must reverse or flip that inequality sign. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples of this. So let's, let's solve. Actually, to get a little bit more practice with one of the things we learned in the last video, let's, let's also uh, write the interval notation a 
of the following inequalities. So let's say we've got this inequality, 11, 11 x minus 12 is less than or equal to four times three x minus six plus eight. So it's a very full statement, but it's something we can tackle. And if you feel like you understood all of the ideas so far, um, it might be worthwhile to pause the video and try this example yourself and see if we arrive at the same result. Um, but if, but, but let's go ahead and, and, and move forward with this. So if we wanna solve this inequality, well, what I'm saying from the previous statements is that we can really treat this uh, very similar to how we would solve an equation. And in an equation, I would first try and simplify both sides of the, uh, the equation and, and mainly simplify the, the right side is, is what needs most simplification. Um, we get 12x, right? Four times this difference here means four times each term in the difference. And we get 12x minus 24 plus eight. And uh, then we've got 11x minus 12. It's less than or equal to 12x and then negative 24 plus eight. Right, whenever we're doing addition or subtraction on, you know, in one of our expressions is uh, each of the terms contain, it really you know, still holds or carries that sign associated with them. So this, this subtraction of 24, I should really think of it as negative 24. And so it would be incorrect here to write 32 minus 32. Really what we ought to write here is negative, four, negative 24 plus eight. Now this is negative 16. Right, if I owe $24 and I, someone gives me eight, well, I can pay off some of that debt, but I still owe 16. Okay, and now we can try and get our variables on one side, uh, the, or the variable we're trying to solve for, and everything else on the other. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract away 12x from both sides. And we end up with, uh, what is this? This is 11 sets of x, take away 12 sets of x, that's negative x minus 12 is less than or equal to negative 16. So everything we've done so far is perfectly fine. All we've done is simplify. And then now we have subtracted from both sides and subtraction is perfectly fine when it comes to uh, our inequality statements. We don't have to flip the inequality sign at all. Um, and I can, I can add to both sides and we've got negative x is less than or equal to negative 16 plus 12, that's negative four. And then I've got this minus sign in, and we don't want minus x, we just want x completely alone. And to get rid of a minus sign, well I can, there's two ways to do it, I can multiply by negative one, divide by negative one, it's the same thing. And let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative one. Right, so you know, this isn't subtraction by one, this is a multiplication. And so we've got positive x, positive four on the right. But because we have multiplied now both sides of the inequality by a negative number, uh, we have to reverse that inequality sign, that right, inequality symbol. Okay. Um, here, let's, let's do uh, this a second way just very quickly. So, you know, there at this step here, maybe you didn't subtract 12x from both sides. Maybe you decided you wanna move the x's to the right side of the inequality and, and everything else to the left. And I wanna show you that that's still a perfectly valid thing to do and you would end up with the same result. And so let's, let's run through that uh, right, right now. So here, uh, if we have got the same spot, 11x minus 12, this is less than or equal to 12x minus 16. All right, one thing we could have chosen to do is subtract away 11x from both sides, that's a valid thing to do. And we get negative 12 is less than or equal to, well, 12 sets of x minus 11 sets of x, that's just one set of x. We add 16 to both sides, to undo that subtraction by 12 that's happening, to, or subtraction by 16 that's happening to x. 
and negative 12 plus 16. If I owe $12, I get 16. I can pay off the debt and I still have four of my dollars left over. Right, and so none of this changed the inequality sign, reverse the inequality sign. So we end up with four is less than X. And previously we had the inequality X is greater than four, but actually these inequalities are the same. They're the same. Right, numbers that are bigger than four, right, that's five, six, seven, eight. Those are the same numbers that four is less than, right, so five, six, seven, eight. Um, these are really the same inequality sign. They're just sort of stated in a slightly different way. Okay, and so what about the interval notation? Uh, and maybe let's take this a step further and let's, let's go ahead and graph this, right, so Numbers that are bigger than four, well that's five, six, seven, and all the numbers in between. Uh, four itself also counts, I don't know why I wrote a negative there. Uh, here's two, and so we know that four, right, we fill it in to say that four itself is a solution to the inequality, and then all the numbers that are bigger are on the right of four. Uh, those are also solutions to the inequality. Okay, what about interval notation? How do we write interval notation for such an inequality? Well, interval notation really just uh, is a way of writing the bounds to our set of solutions, right? So here we write our lower bound, right? The number that bounds our, our set here that I've shaded in, in purple. Uh, well, it's bounded up on the left by the number four. Uh, it's not bounded on the right at all. We can get choose as large of a number as we want, and it's still a solution to this inequality, so there's no bound on the right. Uh, it goes as, all the way out to positive infinity. And well, this is we're allowing for equality here, so we're gonna write, wrap around this four with a square bracket, um, but infinity is not a number to, to uh, equal here, so we write parentheses on the, on the right. Okay, so, so that's the interval notation for that inequality. Uh, let's, let's move on to the next one. So here we've got 11 is greater than or equal to eight plus X over two. And the next one is, is six minus two X is greater than negative eight. So go ahead and pause the video, try these out yourself. Um, write the interval notation for each of these examples, and then we'll go through these together. Okay, so for this first example, you know, we could go ahead and, and try and isolate x by subtracting it from both sides and multiplying by 2, but uh, just to showcase this, you know, we can go ahead and multiply by 2 to both sides to get rid of that division by 2. Um, or this is sort of one way we can clear fractions. Uh, mainly when we're, well, only when we're dealing with an equation or inequality is, is when we can multiply you know, this number two to both sides to, to clear the fractions and we get 22. Uh, well, when we multiply two to both sides of this right fraction, what happens is well, we get 16, we get plus two times x and then divided by two. Well, that multiplication by two and division by two, they cancel out, they undo each other. And we just get x there. And multiplying both sides by a positive number doesn't uh, change the inequality sign. And then now we can subtract away 16 from both sides. And we get six is greater than or equal to X. And remember this is the same, just like as our, in our previous example, this is the same as X is less than or equal to six. Maybe this is a clearer statement to you. And we can write this in an interval notation as, well, the numbers that are smaller than six. So, so this is six is an upper bound to our, our solution, set of solutions. You know, we're allowing for the number six itself, but we can go as low as we want. The lower bound, uh, well, there isn't one. Our values can go all the way down to negative infinity. And negative infinity is not a number to include or exclude. So we use parentheses there. Okay, so this next one here, uh, we've got six minus two X is greater than negative eight. 
subtracting away six from both sides brings us closer to having that x isolated on the left and negative eight minus six. If I owe eight dollars, I owe six more, I really owe 14. Then I divide both sides by that coefficient of x. Right, x is being multiplied by negative two, so I wanna get x1 by dividing by negative two. And we've got x on the left, we've got seven on the right, negative 14 divided by negative two is just positive seven. And then dividing by that negative sign requires reversing the inequality symbol. And so here, this, uh, this inequality, its interval notation expressed as, well, okay, so numbers that are smaller than seven, uh, that's telling us that seven is the largest, uh, it will be larger than all of our, our solutions. We're not including seven and the numbers we can uh, plug in for x and, and have a true inequality statement for. Um, they go all the way down to negative infinity, and negative infinity is not something we can include, so we wrap that in parentheses. Okay, so in the last video, we also talked about uh, these other sorts of inequalities that were, uh, they looked a little fuller, right? So here we've got five is less than or equal to three minus two x, is less than nine. These are called compound inequalities. They're sort of two sandwiched into one. And when it comes to solving these inequalities, uh, really what we do is we sort of, anytime we perform an action to you know, one side, we perform them to all other sides. So I'm gonna try and get this x alone in the middle. And what I would do is I would subtract away three. And in order for me to subtract away three, it'd only be fair if I subtract away three from all the other sides as well. So the little side on the right and the side on the left. And so we get two is less than or equal to negative two X is less than six. And then next I would divide by negative two. And that would amount to dividing by negative two from each side left, middle, and right. And so we get negative one, and then in the middle we just get x, and on the right we get negative three. And because we divided by this negative number, uh, we ought to reverse all of the inequality signs. And so here this, this is the same as uh, negative three is less than x is less than or equal to negative one. And so, right, I can, I can sort of draw a picture here. Uh, we've got negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, right? So some of the solutions are, well, the numbers that are between negative one and negative three, right? Numbers that are bigger than negative three, but at the same time, smaller than or equal to negative one. So these are the ex exactly the numbers that are between negative three and negative one, uh, excluding negative three, right? So we're not allowing for x to be equal to negative three, but we're allowing for x to be equal to negative one. And so what's the interval notation for this inequality for this set of numbers? Well, really my lower bound is negative three. My upper bound is negative one. Uh, we're excluding negative three, including negative one. This is the interval notation for this inequality. And maybe it's worthwhile to check. Let's, you know, we, we checked some solutions for equations in the past to feel confident about our answer. And we can also check our solutions for an inequality. Um, but because inequalities, are, you know, there's so many numbers that make inequalities true most times, there are many different numbers we can imagine checking. Right, so uh, let's let's go ahead and check a few numbers that feel sort of have some relationship to this set. Right, so you know one number you might want to check is x is equal to negative three, uh, x is equal to negative two, or x is equal to negative one. 
And so one thing I want to point out is x is equal to negative 3. You know, we see that number here. But negative 3, we, we just said it's not included in this set. It should not make the inequality true. So this, this should come out to a false statement. This should give us a false inequality. And so that's one thing we can check, as we can see that when we plug in negative 3 into our inequality, that the inequality comes out false. Right? Just because we wrote down the number negative 3 here doesn't mean that it's a solution. In fact, it's very much not a solution. Um, negative 2, on the other hand, well, it's it's sort of right in the middle of things. Uh, it's, it is one of the solutions. Uh, this should come out to be true. And similarly, negative 1, right, we're including negative 1 and then set this. It's filled in on our number line. This should come out to be true. We expect this to be the, the case. And so let's go ahead and, and take our inequality. Um, I'm going to rewrite it just for... Uh, simplicity. So here 5 is less than or equal to 3 minus 2x is less than 9. So this is the original inequality and we want to verify uh, our expectations with some of these solutions. Right, so if I take 5 is so less than or equal to 3 minus 2 times negative 3 is less than 9. Well what we get here is 5 is less than or equal to 3 uh, negative 2 times negative 3, well, that's positive 6. It's less than 9. Well, what happens here? Well, okay, 5 is less than or equal to 9. That's true. But, but for the second inequality, uh, well, 9 is not less than or equal to, or 9 is not less than 9. And so here, what that's saying is that this did not make the, the inequality statement true. So this is not a solution like we expected. Okay, this, is, this is false. For a number to make our inequality statement true, it really has to make both of them true in this case. Okay, let's plug in negative 2, and, and then maybe I'll leave negative 1 out and let you uh, try that on your own. So here we've got negative 2, it's less than 9. We want to verify this inequality. Okay, well, 5 is less than or equal to, uh, well, 3, negative 2 times negative 2, that's, that's positive 4 that we're adding on. We get 5 is less than or equal to, 7 is less than 9, and, and these are true. Uh, both of these inequalities are valid. It's a true inequality like we expect. Negative 2 is a solution to this inequality. Okay, so I didn't check negative 1, but maybe you can try that one out yourself. Um, uh, let's go ahead and end the video here. In the next video, we'll talk about absolute values.